sure you build your patient uh, patient's base that is in terms of your marketing plan when it comes to uh, elephant dental clinic let's just say when uh, corona came in majority of uh, marketing we, were, we used to do it as outreach but when corona came in uh, you you and i both know that curtailed outreach it curtailed uh, social gatherings and all that we had to switch to a bit of digital marketing and uh, well we even had to have trainings for our staff myself included the thing that i didn't know about uh, digital marketing as opposed to the conventional way of marketing but i would say the strongest mode of marketing for us is by word of mouth once you do good work whether you show it out there on social media or by the client a client will always send you someone right. once you just go, go, do good work and uh, the client just feels that yes that work is perfect mm -hmm. they'll send you someone all right all right all right martin so when you look at uh, the space you're in there's so much uh, dental clinics so what makes uh, how are you guys building value in your dental practice to make sure that you give your clientele good quality? I always tend to tell myself that uh, I'm, if you go to a, a qualified dentist, as far as the clinical work is concerned, we should be the same. We are, we are both dentists. It's all about the extra mile that you'll go. Mm -hmm. At our facility, we've uh, always tried to grow a culture of friendliness, such that when you come in, you lose the mentality that you're in a hospital. Because sometimes, okay, not, not everyone wants to go to a dentist. Mm -hmm. Majority of people fear going to the dentist. So we like, uh, we, we, we like losing that uh, fear. Once you walk in, we, personally, I take close to 20 minutes before we even start uh, anything just catch up for you to just lose that fear or emotion that things are going to go south here today whether you come in pain or not i tell you please <laughs> before we do anything we have to first of all lose that whole fear because mm -hmm. once you we start treating you and you have that whole emotion you will affect even what i'm doing you get me so uh, at our facility, it has a culture of friendliness, a culture of homeliness, fact that when you walk in, you lose that fear and mentality that, yes, today I went to a clinic and things are going to go south. It is not so. So you ease up the, ten the yes. tension? Yes, yes. All right. So when it comes to uh, budgeting, how do you ensure that you, st you will uh, stay on, on the budget as a company that you put in place? So how do you ensure you stay on a budget as a business? Let's just say when uh, I'll use the example of uh, when we switched to digital marketing, okay. we had to. Well, it, 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 there was a shakeup in how we plan our finances mm -hmm. because uh, we had uh, previously be using conventional marketing, but now with digital marketing, there's a whole new platform to it. Let's just say we have someone because, like I said, as far as doing mathematics goes. Sometimes I, I, I also like being paid, mm -hmm. not uh, you know, saying that everything is mine, then eventually realizing I've lived a life and it's end month and things are going south. Let's just say we've had to have someone whom we use as our financial advisor, someone who can be budgeting for our finances because uh, like I said again, for things like financial budgeting, when we are buying all our materials and all that it requires a bit of uh, articulation on how we spend our cash oh. so let's say uh, we we have someone for that okay yes and the one you mentioned about the aspect of loan and the stories that you have had about uh, loans so did you go for the loan and which one did you go for uh in considerate to what you needed and uh, uh, the reason I'm asking this question, I want to look at it in an angle of uh, financial, uh, in, you know, loans, uh, even uh, savings, that is. Yes. Uh, well, eventually after all the myths, stories, nightmares and all that, you face reality. In that uh, if you wait that you'll pull your finances until they get to that level, because by every time you feel like you have enough, something comes up. Every time like, you feel you have enough finances, something crops up. 
and then again you can't just start up a business with an exact amount of finances you require something slightly above okay. so eventually yes we had to personally i had to go to one of these financial institutions and yes is it helpful very 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 in the initial uh, phase of the business it was very helpful would you advise someone who wants to get into business to go for a loan i would yes and for what reason i would but i would again insist on discipline mm -hmm. on the money because mm -hmm. again you'll get money yes it's a lump sum it's a lump sum you might you, you have to act quickly because uh, sometimes i'll speak for myself again i won't speak for everyone out there mm -hmm. It's a lump sum, you get so many millions in a lump sum, you might you know, derail and start living the life. Okay. Then years later you start realizing the amount that I took a loan for, it did not end up where it was supposed to be. Okay. So you have to be very focused, very quick to avoid the misuse of that cash. All right. Uh, so we can have pictures of uh, your practice running on our screen and uh, while we are waiting on that, let's look at a couple of uh, achievements. Do you regret actually starting something, you're getting into you know, business after the transition from employment? Do you regret it? No. From uh, whether we are headed up, south, horizontal, to be honest, it's the best decision I ever made. Because uh, when, uh, like I said, when you see other colleagues grow and you talk and they tell you what they've done to get to where they are and you tell yourself, yes, maybe in a few months or years, I'll be in that position. Mm. Yeah, I'll be in that car office just now, you know, mm -hmm. signing checks and, 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 and just, you know, making decisions only. Mm -hmm. So when you see your colleagues succeed mm -hmm. and you talk to them and they give you your story, the, their story that is, and you just, you feel motivated. Okay. You feel motivated that maybe in a few months, years, or whichever amount of time that it will take, that, could, that will be you. Oh, why? Right. Yes. So here comes my quick fire questions. Remember the quick fire questions I told you about? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I gathered all my social media people. Yes. And we came up with questions that you would like to ask you uh, as a dentist. Uh, so how often should I visit uh, the dentist office? I, do I have to? Yes, you have to visit a dentist. Mm -hmm. I always say, I always give the example of uh, mileage. A car has mileage. Why does it have mileage? I always give the example of, uh, currently we are at KDB. <laughs> but on the same, same roads, um, we have KAA. Yeah, that's true. That's true. How does the KAA get to be on the same same road <clears> with <throat> the KDB? Maintenance. Yes. So if a car has mileage, we also have dental mileage. Mm. You get me? I'm not telling you to come see me every week. As to how soon you should see mm -hmm. a dentist, that's between you and the dentist to decide. Reason being why. If you come to me, okay, I'll use a word that uh, due to lack of better English, it, it, when things are in bad shape, mm -hmm. in quotes. At that time, we'll have to decide, yes, I can't let you go and come back after 10 years. I have to see you after a month mm -hmm. just to verify that whatever it is that we've established today, mm -hmm. you've been able to upkeep. Okay. But when you come to me, things are looking good. Well, okay, your smile looks good. Thank you. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so for someone who's watching this and they experience this, that in the morning when they wake up, and there's a lot of tooth sensitivity, like if I'm going out for jogging, I can't really... Up can't really open my mouth because there's too much of tooth sensitivity. When if there's heat, then there's tooth sensitivity. What causes that and how can we take care of that? Sensitivity can be caused by so many factors. Reason, uh, one of them being how you brush. If you brush using a hard brush and use too much force, you can cause what you call gingival recession. Recession exposes a part of the tooth that was previously covered by the gums. When you expose that to the external environment, temperature changes, acidic environment, you can have sensitivity. Another issue that can cause about sensitivity is uh, tooth decay, the cavities. The cavities, once they get too deep to the inner aspects of the tooth, the dentin, you get sensitivity again. Then there's uh, people, like for people who grind their teeth at night, the, the wear on really? top, when they grind their teeth, the people who grind their teeth at night, 
Mm-hmm. You've heard, I'm sure you've heard of that. Mm-hmm. People who, even during due to the day, due to stress, mm-hmm. someone when they are a bit stressed, what do they do? Start grinding oh, their teeth. Okay. What do they do? The tooth gets worn off. Mm. So there are so many factors that can lead to sensitivity. So I always advise when you have sensitivity, and especially when it's so severe, such that even the morning breeze is hitting you, you have to see a dentist. Okay. Yes. So the mucus is these the people who actually brush their mouth, their their mouth literally like uh, probably after hours, yeah. But they steal the bad breath. How can we deal with that? Again, uh, for an issue of bad breath, I always say some uh, self-diagnosis is a bit hard. Google is our friend. They tell us that, Dr. Martin. The, the, the issue is, uh, I always, the, like for when I get clients who mm-hmm. come to me and they tell me, Doc, mm-hmm. I have bad breath, I normally ask them, who told you? Mm-hmm. Then they tell you, Doc, it's me who? Discovered, and also friends, they say. Well, when someone has told you it's okay, Mm-hmm. But when it's self-diagnosed, mm-hmm. I, for me, I well, I <laughs> that one I have to weigh. Uh-huh. But for things like uh, halitosis, that is bad breath, it can be due to gum issues mm-hmm. if you've not been brushing properly. Sometimes there are things we assume we know how to do naturally. Mm-hmm. One of them is what brushing our teeth. But we might be brushing the uh, even more or less than you are required to brush, but the issue is how we are brushing. Mm-hmm. Or again, you might be using the wrong type of brush. I was heading there. You get me? Yes. But again, like I said, there are things we assume we know how to do. Mm-hmm. But it's good that we have someone, a profession, show us how to go about it. How to go about it. Okay, on the issue of brush, yes. earlier on you mentioned that uh, one of the things that can cause uh, tooth sensitivity is the type of brush that you're using if it's too hard. So what texture of a brush should we use? I always advocate for a soft brush. You use a soft brush, the required frequency, change it at the required frequency. Which is required frequency? I, al- for, for, I always say between two to three months. Okay. You should mm-hmm. change your brush. But again, all these things can be determined when you go to see your dentist. Mm-hmm. They can always advise you. If they feel the, the brush that you're using is not uh, as effective, they'll tell you, yes, which brush are you using? Last time we changed it was when? Go change it today. Okay. So majority of those things, that's why I'm saying, the required frequency is between five to six months. Mm-hmm. But it is not engraved in stone. Should you go and things are a bit too off? Like personally, when you come to me and things are a bit too off, I'll tell you, no, mm-hmm. I'm not going to see you in five months. Mm-hmm. Come in a month, just for a review. Then after a month, I tell you, okay, you've improved. Mm-hmm. Maybe see me after three months first. Okay. But now when you, when you come to me and things are looking a bit super, I'll tell you it's okay. Mm-hmm. You can see me in five months okay. or six months, yes. What causes bleeding of gum? Bleeding of gum is inflammation of the gums. And what, what do they get inflamed again? Due to the way you're brushing. If you don't brush effectively, there'll be, acu- the, the, there'll be accumulation of plaque on the marginal of the gums, such that when you brush or when you use, when you eat hard foods, so long as there's just some that has uh, touched the margin of the gum, there is bleeding. Okay. So again, it's how you brush still. Mm-hmm. It all goes back to how, how you, brush, you brush, how effective it is. Not even the frequency. <laughs> okay. You might be brushing even four times, mm-hmm. but again, like we said, sometimes we assume we know some of these things. Mm-hmm. But unless you're shown, you might be shown and you wonder, I wasn't brushing that way, maybe that's why now. All right, and uh, we have also people who have dry mouth. So, uh, how can you help such people? With dry mouth, sometimes it can be a consequence of the drugs they are taking. They might okay. be taking drugs due to other uh, other diseases, and some of the side effects are dry mouth. So, some of those uh, issues like dry mouth, we have to come and analyze. Are you on other medication? And those drugs that you are taking, do they have a side effect of dry mouth? So, we have to rule out several factors. Mm. and just check whether even the ducts from the glands, whether they are blocked or not. Okay. So that we can rule out, you, you might not be taking any drugs, but the salivary ducts from your glands that empty into the mouth, they might be blocked. So oh. you have to rule out several, several factors. Okay, so in this next question, I'm so sure <laughs> Kenyans are so guilty in this. So when you, ha- when you want to remove something in between your, your teeth, right, 
uh, instead of using a toothpick, which I'm not sure it's also the right option, or even brushing your teeth, you always go for sharp objects. You get mm. just in between the teeth. How harmful is this? I again want to say this: removing things in between your teeth should be done using floss. Okay. Not sharp objects. Not sticks. Sometimes you're just somewhere eating a machoma mm -hmm. and you just ask uh, the guy, bring me a piece of wood. <laughs> you get me? Yes. Sharp objects, uh, the toothpick is supposed to be used to remove things on top of the tooth. Especially for back teeth. If you look mm -hmm. at the back teeth, they have grooves, valleys and all that. You're crushing a bone, something gets stuck in between. Not in between teeth, in between those grooves. Mm -hmm. you should, you, that, for that one you can use a toothpick. But in between teeth, supposed to use floss okay yes i think guys are really and actually the floss can even tell you whether you have bad breath or not mm -hmm. you'll use it then just smell, smell it smell it yes oh yes yeah okay but for the toothpick you'll go you'll use <coughs> it you'll injure the gum oh yeah yeah okay so no and also feel that also uh plays a role when it comes to tooth sensitivity if you if you keep using it in yeah. between teeth mm -hmm you'll cause some sort of erosion on the tooth. Then uh -huh. eventually, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. We have really got educated on those quick questions. Thank you very much. So Thank you. A couple of challenges that you're facing as a business. Currently, I would say, well, there's an, uh, apart from, well, one of, one of them is Corona. Mm -hmm. it's, it's affecting all of us. Yes. It has increased uh, the cost of doing business, especially in medicine, because you have to keep sanitizing, all the surfaces you have to use uh, an aerosol every now and then in the in the business that has really really affected how we do business the other issue would be the cost of some of these materials majority of them are not found locally especially when it comes to things that have to do with corona you have to keep importing them and uh, some of these uh, let's just say some of these issues bring them into a country it's been quite the challenge. Okay. So for us, those two, yeah, they are biggest challenges. All right. Yes. As we wind up, tell guys how they can, where they can find you, your location, and also your social media handles. Okay then. Yes. Uh, again, our facility, Elephant Dental Clinic, Corner mm. House, like the name suggests, we are located at Corner House on second floor. Corner House is uh, immediately opposite Hilton Hotel. So yes, for any and all your dental issues, you're most welcome to Elephant Dental Clinic Corner House. On social media, that is Instagram and Facebook, we are Elephant Dental Clinic Corner House. We respond to queries almost immediately. Our phone numbers are on 24-7. And uh, we have a website, Elephant Dental Clinic Cornerhouse.co.ke. You can use the website to make appointments and to also ask questions. You're most welcome. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Martin Bashira, for creating time to be with us and thank talking you. about the business, the business aspect of dentistry. Thank you. All right, so let you uh, uh, have your nice day and go hail and help you know the world have a beautiful smile. I like yours. <laughs> <laughs> Asante Sana, thank you very much. So that is Dr. Martin Bashira, chief dentist in uh, at Elephant uh, Dental Clinic. So make sure you follow them across all the social media platform and visit them uh, for further. Uh, information and conversation, right? So at y 2 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles. At Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. We'll be right back with so much more right here on Why in the Morning, Entrepreneurship Tuesday.